communiquer avec l'église de Vallis ou pour envoyer vos dons par chèque ou mandat poste. Faites le www.cibl.cam.org ou par la poste CIBL au soin de l'église de Vallis, 1691 boulevard Pineuf, Montréal, Québec, H1V 2C3. Merci. Bon matin, mesdames et messieurs, vous êtes à l'écoute de Vallis. Speck of Dust à CBN, le 101,5 FM, à Radio Libre, à Montréal. Mon nom, El Topon, Wild Bill est là avec nous ce matin, as well as a foreign film crew, here doing what they do best. That's right. Un peu plus tard dans l'émission, this is a great show, we've got plenty of things for you. Nous avons um, une liste de vinyles et de CD, nous allons... Nous allons jouer un peu plus tard. Nous avons aussi, comme d'habitude, un autre épisode de PH7 vers 5 heures ce matin. Et uh, cette semaine, l'épisode uh, s'intitule Le bébé. This is, uh, he's up to date, you know, with this cloning thing. And he's going to talk about Serge Manast, uh, le fœtus, avortement, uh, radioactivité et uh, l'acte des dents, according to the cassette here. This is episode number 7. PH7. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, vous pouvez toujours nous contacter au 526-2581 while we're playing music or whatever else we may be doing here in the studio. Now, it's been a very strange news week for us again. But, quite honestly, the media can no longer disappoint us. It's become weirder than even we could have imagined seven years ago when we began this show. I don't know. It's like out of a Philip K. Dick novel. And God knows we've been seeing a lot of him lately in cinema. And just about everything around us, in fact. How you doing over there, Wild Bill? I know we have a particularly vast amount of documents to get through this uh, this morning. Uh, quite a few from our good friend, Mr. Uh, what's his name? Save the Mails.ca there, that guy from Winnipeg. He's always extraordinarily interesting. That, yeah. <coughs> Save the mails.ca. That's the one, yeah. Again, for those who uh, 
didn't write it down, www.savethemails.ca. Um, yes, the uh, first article, and by the way, before I get into the first article, actually I have already gotten into the first article, but uh, you mentioned something about the media being all, uh, I don't know, weird, gung-ho, screwed up. Lately, the media, at least in Canada, uh, is trying to voice a bit more of what really is going on. Um, but we, we here in Canada that receive U.S. Uh, TV, different channels of satellite and so on, cable, um, we see that U.S. media is just another propaganda tool. We, uh, it's clear to us because we have the option of watching two different different types of of media, really. Uh, the Canadian and the American, they're not very different, but there is a slight difference. And when you do watch BBC, uh, the same story will be portrayed very differently in the BBC, but you never ever here in North America get the view of a third world country uh, on the same topic of an oil spill, let's say, that might affect Morocco or even anybody else down that African coastline. We don't know. We don't get to see any of that. Um, and this because the media is um, responsible in one way for the well-being of the economy. Or at least they're made, uh, they make the media feel responsible. Uh, for example, stories sometimes are held back because of fear of panic, whether it be economic or real panic in the streets. They just do not tell us the truth of whatever's going on. We see shows on TV that uh, deal with this issue of uh, not knowing about what's about to kill you. Shows like 24 and the atomic bomb that's about to go off and, and somewhere in California and Los Angeles or what have you. Um, yeah, I've been following that one actually a while, Bill. It's, it's quite extraordinary as a piece of propaganda, but what a, what, what a piece of propaganda. It turns out in the last episode I only got the last 15 minutes. It's, it's all the women, man. The, uh, the, the terrorist, it wasn't the husband. No, it was, it was his... It was his daughter that nobody ever suspected. Man. She goes on a shooting rampage. And the president's wife, man, she's in there. She's evil, fuck. It's interesting. What I got from the show is that um, nothing, is seems, nothing seems to be what it looks like or however that goes. And uh, Does the guy live? Does she shoot him at the end or what happens? He, I don't know because I missed like 45 minutes. I only got the last 15. So I guess he got away. I don't know about her. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to know. But uh, I was I was talking about the types of show. It's not the only one. I mentioned that particular one because I know you've been following it on Topo. But uh, there's other ones out there. West Wing, Jag. Um, fuck, man. I, I can't can't think of all of them but there's many out there to make us think that big brother is there for us the best example of the use of big brother and the, the the whole story being about the use of what big brother has as uh, weapons really or or resources is enemy of the state will smith plays um, a lawyer that gets involved into a cover-up of some sort that in that, that in itself involves the murder of a senator done by a uh, national NSA agent um, and if it wasn't for Big Brother they would have never solved the mystery or what have you or I don't know how basically control is on everybody's mind and the saying goes like this if you have nothing to hide then why don't you want us to be able to listen to you or look at you you have nothing to hide right now giving up one's privacy is the last step before the economy becomes alive literally 
like an organism. So far, and up until now I should say, it's been a bunch of numbers that change on the screen, dictating who gets to eat steak and hot dogs. We've gotten over that. And if the steak is going to be contaminated or not. All that has to do with those little numbers. And when you hear about famine on the other side of the world, it's only because we're dumping, dumping food, really, in order for those numbers to keep going up. Now, controlling population has been an issue for the longest of time. Uh, kings try to control their populations and so on and so forth, uh, before them and after them, up until today. And today, we use the numbers of a country's population for or against it depending on the economy. For example, China. Now China has one-sixth of the uh, world's population on a territory that is not necessarily proportionate. Uh, what this causes is poverty. Now, the way they deal with it is through an economic system that is really communist. In the sense that the people work for the people and so on and so forth. Yes, that's not true or whatever in theory. We don't know. We don't live there. Long story short, Chinese people have been living in China for a very long time, the way they've been living. And... Uh, whether some die or not, we never find out. All we know is that they keep reproducing. Uh, they ran into a couple of problems because of certain beliefs, and they've only producing males. Now, here in, in, in North America, for some reason, um, we have no population problem. We have not overpopulated North America. Far from it compared to China. And yet, this is where we enforce most of the uh, propaganda that is against having family beliefs or a family institution and thus against reproduction itself. This because of the economy. Maybe most of you think that all this started here in North America, it hasn't it started in Europe. But Europe is much more advanced than we are when it comes to these matters. Um, but in Europe, it wasn't enforced. It happened naturally in one way, in the sense that Europeans are an older civilization, if you want it, than North Americans. Yes, we stem from them, but our way of life is very different, simply because our needs are different. The only reason North America, and U.S. in particular, chose to destroy the notion of the family was because they got scared that once everybody got their dream that they would stop working. That is what frightened the American elite and forced people to pay taxes and, and created inflation really. Because what they were scared of is when everybody, every family had their house, their two cars, and a white or pink picket, picket fence that that family um, leader, the father and the mother, would basically retire. And the kids would go out and do the same and the same and the same. And eventually, they would have a bunch of people that would not be working because they would have saved up enough that the grandchildren would be inheriting the grandparents' home. Therefore, they don't need a home. So they could work less. <laughs> And they came to the conclusion that unless you taxed people, the people would stop working the moment they sought 
that it was whatever, that the funds that they had amassed were sufficient to live out the rest of their lives. And thus you have to, and in, in order to not let this happen, you have to tax them. And eventually destroy the family core, that way everybody's an individual and can, only, can rely only on themselves. No history, no background. The best way to manipulate someone is if they have no family, nobody that they call friends, and nobody that they can ask advice from, even if it's the smartest person in the world. It, there's a way to con such a person. Um, the reason is because they don't know where they're coming from, therefore they have no clue where the fuck they're going. A little bit like a clone. 